everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor. Thanks so much for joining me here today on this Total Wellness Tuesday, where I'm excited to bring you the do's and don'ts of a functional medicine detox. And I have 20 of them for you today. They're literally the top 20 questions that we've gotten over the past couple years since introducing a functional medicine detox in our practice and online to all of you. So two weeks ago on episode 823, hopefully you tuned into that, I went through how to complete, like how to properly complete a 714 or 21 day functional medicine detox. And again, I always give you the Dr. Cabral detox as your way of figuring out what a detox should look like, but you're welcome to work with your functional medicine practitioner or whether you're reading a specific book and follow their detox. I'm okay with that as long as you know what it's supposed to contain and what it's supposed to do. So I want you to tune into that episode. If you did not, because I'm not going to cover those same things on episode 823. So again, stephencabral.com forward slash 823. That will take you to that episode. And I walk you through how to do the shake fast days, how many days a week to do the shake fast, what to do if you're going to continue on to the second week or third week, whether you need those second you know, shake fast days on week two and week three. I will take you through all of those specific things, this, the actual herbs and vitamins that your liver needs in order to detox. So just a quick recap. I'm not going to go through that, but just know that a functional medicine detox is not a cleanse. It's not meant to you know, make you have a lot of bowel movements or anything like that. What it's meant to do is help to clean these 77,000 man-made chemicals to the best of its ability and the best of your ability out of your body, right? So every single day, so just for example, the average woman leaves the house with 126 different toxins on her body from the average of 12 different cosmetics that she uses. Men are not far behind, but everything from your shampoo, your conditioner, makeup, all of the toothpaste, everything, all of these things have toxins in them. And our body does the very best that it can. But one thing that it does is it actually stores a lot of these toxins in your adipose tissue, which is your fat cells. And those begin to swell. So it's not always that we're overeating, that we're not exercising enough. Those are important. But a lot of the time, our cells can actually swell. We start to look softer, puffier. And the reason is that our body is literally toxic. We call it toxic water weight. So a lot of the weight that you do lose during a a seven-day, let's just call it the seven-day detox. I mean, we have people lose five to 10 pounds in a week. And yes, not all of that is body fat, but it's because their body is swollen. They don't regain that weight. That's not hydration weight. No. Your body is meant to be about two-thirds hydrated water. It's not meant to be swollen. It's not meant to be puffy. You're not meant to have cellulite. That is not normal water weight on the body. So yes, we eliminate that and we're burning body fat at the same time. So remarkable things happen when you give the body the nutrients that it needs. And that's why every single Friday I'm dedicated to bringing you the super nutrient of the week. Because your body, we know this now, proven through science, that your body needs specific vitamins and minerals and amino acids in order to do its job. And when it doesn't get those, it still does its job, but not as well, which means now you're compromised, which now, if you don't already have a dis-ease of the body, one will be coming in the next couple of years or maybe a decade. Who knows? Because it just depends on what your reserves look like, meaning what are your deficiencies and what are your toxicities? The greater the toxicities build up, well, the more reserves you need to buffer all of those toxins, right? So phase one detox, we need the vitamin C, we need the zinc, we need things like selenium, we need all the B vitamins, especially folate and B12, we need glutamine, and in phase two, well, we need the, we need the cysteines, right? We need the N-acetylcysteine, we need glutathione produced from that, we need selenium to help with that conversion, we need the sulfur-based amino acids, so we need all of those things, and if your body doesn't get them, well, it's still doing its job. I mean, people are like, oh, well, I'm detoxing every day. Yes, you are, but not to the best of your ability which is why in Ayurvedic times and in every, I mean, Egyptian, every form of medicine, they always had detoxification-based periods. They had water fasting. They had all sorts of different things that the body could do. So again, they always did it seasonally, and I believe seasonally is the way to be. Now, you don't have to wait for a season, but let's say about every 12 weeks is a good time to do a seven-day, 14-day, or 21-day detox. Now, the 21-day detox is the best way to start if you've never done one before. Yes, yes, it is going to be new to you, right? But then after that, you can maintain with seven-day detoxes seasonally. That would be totally fine. And if you can only do a seven-day, well, a seven-day works great as well. And again, we have the Dr. Cabral Detox. You can go to drcabraldetox.com. And the reason I'm telling you to go to that site is so that you can see how it's done. 
You don't have to use ours. I never say that you have to use ours because you might be working with an amazing naturopath or amazing health coach and, and they have one by their favorite brand that they want you to use. Well, what I teach you on episode 823 is what to look for. And if it has those ingredients, well, you should be good to go. Now, it should also follow though the two days of the shake fasting if possible. And again, I tell you who it's not optimal for on that episode. What I want to do now though is I want to really dive into the 20 do's and don'ts Like things that people are doing right now that's not the best thing to do on a detox or things that they should be doing so they get more benefit from it. Because I honestly believe, like I honestly believe it's no longer an option. It's just not an option. We have to be detoxing. Even if you feel healthy, well, you need to do that to continue to still feel healthy. Like I tell this all the time, I feel better every single year, but maybe I feel better every single year because I'm doing seasonal detoxes every 12 weeks. And then sometimes even a little bit more often. I could talk about this all day. So let's get right into the 20 do's and don'ts. The first one is this. Can I work out on a detox? Can I work out on a detox? And the answer is yes, but, and there's a caveat here, but not ideal on days one and two of the shake fasting days. Okay. So if you're not doing the shake fast days of the four shakes, which is a shake every three and a half hours, then yes, it's okay to work out. And have people worked out on the days that they're doing the shake fast? Yes. But just know you're going to deplete your body of glucose faster. You might feel a little bit less energy, all of those things. So what we say is just wait through days three through seven or the second or third week of your detox then to work out on those days because then you're going to get all the whole food meals and the nutrition in your body. So yes, you can work out on a detox. It's recommended. I would also say that doing a sauna, it would be even better on like days one and two because now you're going to sweat out more toxins. Remember, The detox, the functional medicine detox is allowing you to mobilize toxins to a much faster degree to eliminate them faster from your body through stool, urine, sweat, and huffing it off through exercise, okay? So yes, absolutely fine. You can work out on a detox. Best not to do it on the shake fast days though. Can I have nut milk on a detox? That's the second question we have coming in, the second do's and don'ts. Yes, you can have nut milk with your shakes, even on the shake on the one and two, if if you don't like the shake with just water. I prefer just straight spring water or filtered water with the shake. That's the best you can do. Like That's definitely the best. But if you have to do a nut milk to make it a little bit more texture, like a little bit more palatable, because maybe you're not used to doing powdered shakes before, like maybe you're just, you've never done that before. Sure. Like let's, we have a lot of people trying to get their, their parents to do it. And they're like, well, they've never done a protein shake or an all-in-one or anything like that. It can be tough for them. Okay. Well then yes, do whatever you have to do to get them to do it because it's so much better. Meaning like if you need to add a couple drops of stevia, then then do that. If you need to add some coconut milk, then go for it. Do that. Yes. So you can do that if you need to, but don't if you don't need to. Okay. Number three is what if I'm not trying to lose weight? Can I still do a functional medicine detox? The answer is yes. And the answer is you should. It's not just for people trying to lose weight. Yes. People can lose five to 10 pounds in a week. We've had people lose 10 plus pounds on the 14 day Dr. Ball Detox and we've had people lose more than 15 pounds on the 21-day Dr. Ball Detox, okay? Your weight loss will depend on the amount of weight you need to lose. So if you don't need to lose weight, you might lose like three pounds still, all right? But you can easily gain that three pounds back after the seven days, right? It's super simple to do, right? Just go back to your normal eating, and you'll gain that weight right back normally. But what you'll do is you'll remove a lot of the toxins at the same time. Now, if you're not trying to lose weight, I talked about it on episode 823, that you can actually put berries in your smooth, like you can actually make them into smoothies instead of just the shake powder and the water mixed together. So you can add a little bit more. And then also I talked about it besides the berries, you can add things like sweet potatoes, yams, yuca, more root vegetables to your meals to keep your calories up, but still follow the guide. All of this is written out by the way on the um, Dr. Ball Detox. So, and it's on the website as well. All right. So yes, absolutely do the detox, even if you're still not trying to lose weight. Okay. I'm not trying to lose weight anymore. I still do the detox and I average about a three and a half pound weight loss after the seven days. And I gain the weight back in typically about a week after the detox. Okay. So I just go back to my normal weight that I want to be. All right. Can I eat more than the allocated serving size? Yes. But so the reason why we rate even a serving size is that people want to know like a, a formula. And we say, okay, let's give you a formula. We want you to have about half a cup to a cup of protein. We'll get into that in just a moment. I talk about what type of protein to have. But the short answer is, yes, you can have more than the allocated serving size, meaning that if you're still hungry, you can eat to be satiated. But keep in mind, if you're trying to lose weight, 
we're also trying to shrink the stomach naturally on the detox. So we're trying to get your stomach used to having less food put in it. And also the goal of the detox is less total toxic load on the body, which means that we're just trying to be gentle on the body for a week or two weeks or three weeks. That's it. We're giving it a period of time to slow down, to calm down, where we're not always kind of stuffing it full. And so what I would say is eat a healthy meal, half a cup to a cup of protein, two cups of vegetables, a couple tablespoons of a healthy fat, and then allow your body to eat slowly, to feel satiated. And if you need to, then you can add a little bit more, especially just on the veggie standpoint. Okay. Number five is, can I have coffee? So you don't want to stop coffee necessarily unless you're looking to break the coffee habit when you go on a functional medicine detox. Here's why. A lot of people blame the effects they're feeling on the detox, like a headache or low energy or low mood. They blame all of those things on the detox when really they stopped coffee at the same exact time. And that's called coffee or caffeine withdrawal. So it, it's just it's up to you. If you believe that, hey, I'm, I'm going to cut out my caffeine addiction at the same time, and knowing that you might get the headaches and the low energy, all of that, then fine, totally do it. It's best not to do caffeine on a detox. And the reason is that caffeine actually slows liver detoxification. So it's just called the cytochrome P450 pathway, if anybody wants to just do a little bit of research on their own. But the truth is that if the coffee gets you powered through the detox, a cup of black coffee or black coffee with just a little bit of almond milk or coconut milk or macadamia nut milk, which is one of my favorites, then totally fine. Just do it. Just one cup. That's it. One cup of the morning to get you going. And, and I think that, again, I would rather have you do the detox and not be perfect than not do it. So have your cup of coffee if you need to. But just remember, don't blame all the effects of caffeine withdrawal on the detox. Okay. Can I do two shakes instead of four on the first two days of the shake fasting? So usually it's a shake around 8.30 a.m., or I should say 8 a.m., 11.30 a.m., 3 p.m., and then 6 p.m. I might have that off just a little bit, but it's essentially around 8 a.m., 11.30. Yes, it's every three and a half hours. Okay, so if I do the math, 3.30, 6.30, right around there or so. Okay, so the reason we do that is because each shake contains 20 ounces of water as well. So you're getting 80 ounces of water for the day. So I sneak a couple things in there, right? So the Dr. Ball Detox, I don't know if, you know, again, like just make sure that the functional medicine detox around is doing this as well, is that you're getting a lot of hydration. That's 10 glasses of water for the day. That means that you're going to be flushing the system. You're going to have to be urinating and that urine will also contain toxins that you're removing from your body. And again, this is clinically proven. You can see heavy metals. You can see all sorts of toxins in that urine of people that do a detox, Ayurvedic and functional medicine. So it's pretty impressive. That's why I like the four some people like to do too. I just believe that in order to be satiated and in order to get in enough water, it's best to do one scoop per shake, not two scoops twice a day. Now, can you do two scoops twice a day? Yes. About seven years ago, when I wasn't using the Dr. Ball Detox, I was using another brand. They did two shakes a day. And I actually created my own formula with everything that I wanted in it. And I actually switched it to four shakes a day because I, I did it myself many times and I got feedback from being a, a you know a clinician of actually having a clinical practice and I felt four was much better. Can you do two? Yes, but it's just a lot more time between not eating. That's it. So if you want to do eight in the morning and you know six at night or something like that, you're you're welcome to. I just believe that the four is much better. Just make sure you get in the four total scoops per day, all seven days, okay? Every day. So again, when you go to days three through seven, you are doing two shakes a day. You're doing breakfast shake and you're doing mid-afternoon. And that's two scoops in each the first two days is four shakes per day, and that's one scoop in each shake. Either way, it equals four scoops, right? All right. Is it okay to do more than a quarterly detox? And the answer is yes. We have some people do a one-week detox every month. And I've talked about this before in the Cabral Concept. Is it my favorite thing? No, but the reason they're doing it makes sense. They're unwilling to follow a healthy eating plan and healthy lifestyle unless they're doing the Dr. Ball Detox. Meaning like they just don't want to be that stringent in life. They want to eat their favorite foods. They want to be able to drink a couple nights a week. They want to do all of those things. So their compromise is that once a month, they're going to do a five-day or seven-day detox. And the five-day would simply be do the first two shake fast days and the last three you're following the days three through seven meal plan. You just end two days early. I guess that's another question. That's a little bonus one I threw in is you don't have to do the seven days if you only have five. Five is always way better than zero. Okay? So... That's that. Once a month, we have people do it. 
do I recommend it? No, because I would love you to, to get into a healthier eating pattern and then every 12 weeks to do a seven-day detox. That would be my goal for you. But can you do it more than once a quarter? Yes, you can do it, I would say, maximum of every four weeks. Okay. And that would be only be for seven day, of course, right? Oh, hopefully, I just want to make that clear. So that would be it. Okay. Why a vegetarian lunch? That's number eight. Okay. Why a vegetarian lunch, people ask. So we do a vegetarian or a vegan lunch, whatever you prefer to call it. And that's because the protein is coming from chickpeas or hummus or beans or lentils or hemp hearts, which is my favorite. And the reason we do that is less total toxic load on the body and easier to digest. So when you look into nutritional biochemistry, you look into how difficult a food is to break down. And some of the hardest to break down foods are actually meat, like especially red meat. They require more hydrochloric acid. A lot of people in the detox uh, might be on Prilosec or antacid blockers, or they might have just weak gut function. What we wanted to do is, is to make it really easy to digest foods, chew your food really well, less toxins coming in. Again, a lot of the meat products, a lot of the fish products that people are eating right now are not from healthy sources. So we need to cut back on that, dramatically cut back on that. And we want to be able to instead use all that energy for digestion of the heavier meats and proteins to be able to then use that energy for boosting the immune system, for detoxifying the body and making you feel more alive. That's the bottom line. So that's why we do the vegan lunch. And then you get to choose a vegan dinner or choose your fish or um, you know poultry uh, for dinner if you choose to. Okay. Number nine is can I do a detox while doing another candida and bacterial overgrowth cleanse or parasite protocol, one of those? And the answer is yes. We just don't usually advise it right away, and that's because we don't want you to feel overwhelmed. So a lot of the times, just to kind of let the cat out of the bag, when we're working with someone in clinical practice, leading up to our appointment, we have them do a 7, 14, or 21-day Dr. Ball detox. And then once they get their personalized wellness plan, their body's already ready. It's in a great state. They've already learned a lot of the nutrition plan. And then we have them move right into the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol. So it's a great way to do it. And then you can end with a detox if you want. But you can absolutely do them at the same time. You can. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to be comfortable with it. Meaning like, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. That's the whole thing. But yes, your body can tolerate it and it would be completely fine to do. Okay. Question do I take my regular supplements during the detox? Yes. You continue on with your regular supplements and your medications, okay? You don't change those unless you've been spoken to do that by a health practitioner or doctor, right? So you never stop your current medication. And in terms of supplements, a lot of times, even the people that I work with in clinical practice, I actually just have them do the detox supplements for days one and two, and then get right back on their protocol on days three through seven. Now, what if they're taking specific nutritional supplements to help with them sleep at night, to help with anxiety? Well, sure. Then you can still absolutely take those and you should. But what if you're just taking like adrenal-based products or extra whatever? Do you need to take them? Probably not for 48 hours. I think you'd be fine. And then you can just go back onto them on days three through seven. Because again, days one and two when you're doing the shake fast is really meant to calm the body and give it a little bit time off from life. That's essentially it. Just relaxation, less workouts, less stress, just kind of relax into it. Okay. But yes, you can absolutely continue on with them and should continue on with them during your detox. All right, if I'm having a salad for lunch and dinner that says that I count my two cups, do I count my two cups as vegetables? I see what you're saying. So you're asking, does lettuce count as the two cups of vegetables? Okay, so I would say you count lettuce as just, like count the two cups of lettuce as one cup and then put on another cup of vegetables. And the reason is that we just don't want to massively expand the stomach. So lettuce, like totally fine, you can do all of those things. But if you're doing a half a cup to a cup of protein, Think of that as one handful. Then you're doing another cup of lettuce. That's another handful. Another cup of lettuce. Okay, now you have three handfuls. And then another cup of veggies. And then you're doing some um, avocado or olive oil. You know, that that's enough food. We're also looking at total quantity of food, all right? Great quality food, but also total quantity. So feel free to add that lettuce, two cups, plus an extra cup of vegetables on top of that, such as cucumber or carrots or whatever you enjoy. Okay, can I have herbal teas on the detox? The answer is yes. And that is right on your... We send you a meal plan guide, like this nice little mini brochure. And again, the mini brochure that you can carry around with you in your pocket during the day came from advice that we were given or feedback. And so again, we always listen to your feedback. And herbal teas, such as ginger tea, chamomile tea, turmeric tea, like whatever you want is totally fine. Herbal-based, non-caffeinated, fantastic. But again, even if you wanted green tea on the detox, 
Green tea is a detoxifier. I don't have a problem with that. So teas in general, I'm pretty much fine. I would go easy on the black teas, just like I would go easy on coffee because of the caffeine and how it can slow down the detox process. Okay. I'm experiencing headaches, fatigue, et cetera. What can I do during the fast days? All right. So do's and don'ts. Like Again, if you are experiencing headaches from doing the detox, you have to ask yourself, is it because I'm just stopped caffeine, right? So that would be a don't. If you're not looking to experience those things, then it's a don't. Fatigue, well, this is a time where your body's using a lot of energy, very few calories, and, and your body's then literally going after it through a process called autophagy, destroying and breaking down necrotic tissue, cancer-based cells, removing toxins from the body. All of these things, again, clinically proven. If you say like, oh, well, how do you know that you know your body's removing cancer cells? 2016 Nobel Prize winner, showed that during these periods of fast uh, that the body begins to break down uh, these uh, negative cells or pathogens in the body. So fatigue, get to bed earlier, uh, make sure you're hydrated, don't exercise in the first couple of days. Those are all the do's. Like Do those things. Ex- uh, don't exercise is a don't, right? Get to bed earlier is a do. Make sure you're hydrated. And, and those, that's my, my uh, recommendation on that. And it gets easier actually with every detox. My first detox, brutal. After that, subsequently, easier every single time. Most people find that. Now, remember though, if you've kind of gone off reservation and and fell off the wagon, as they say, then your body, when it feels, you know, the detox is going to be more challenging. And that's a good thing. That means that you are, you're actually getting more stuff out of the body and that is getting you back on track. So that is typically what I'm recommending. And I'm also, this is a don't. Don't detox. Don't go into the Dr. Well detox or another functional medicine detox the day after having like a half a dozen drinks. That's not a good idea. You're going to be low blood sugar and you're going to be low energy going into it. I usually say have the cheat meal Saturday night. Sunday is a normal eating day. Monday, go into the detox. Or again, you can do any day of the week that you want. But the day after you know, alcohol, not a great idea to do it. Okay? All right. Do I have to fast on the first two days? This is number 14. The answer is I've explained this on episode 823. And a do is yes, do fast on the first two days, if you're looking to overcome some type of dis-ease in the body, or if you are looking to lose weight, okay? You don't necessarily have to fast the first two days if you are looking to not lose weight and you're overall feeling pretty healthy, but you don't want whole food meals on those days. So on those days, you would do four smoothies per day that you could put spinach in and the blueberries, like the Purple Crush recipe that I recommend. And again, if you just go to any of my podcast pages, there's a little image to download my free smoothie report that gives you all my favorite smoothies. So you can just do smoothies all day long for the first two days, but the goal is liquid and the goal is just to flush the system. So that's what I recommend on the detox. Um, absolutely. That's what I recommend. Now, let's just say you can't do that. You're not willing to do it. Well, again, some detox is better than none. So start with days three through seven and that would be fine, but you will not get as much of the detoxifying benefits as when you divert more of your energy to detoxification and the immune system. Okay. So can my children do the detox? This would be a don't. Do not allow pregnant women. Don't allow anyone with any type of kidney disease or liver disease or children to do the detox. It's going to be too strong for the body. Okay. So can't recommend that. And so that would be a no. How old should a child be? Well, that's obviously with parental consent. They have to do what they feel is best for their body. Will some children do it as teenagers? Yes, but they will not do the two shake fast days. So that's kind of a caveat to my last answer is they will start with days three through seven. Shake, vegan lunch, shake, you know, with the other capsules. It's not just the shake. We'll get to that in a moment. And then the uh, paleo or vegan dinner at night. Start with days three through seven, not the shake fast days. We don't want to overwhelm the system of anyone that is not able to keep up with that. And the reason you don't do it while pregnant is because you actually start to mobilize more toxins and we would not want that to cross the placenta into the unborn baby. Okay. So what do I eat after the 21 day detox? Well, the do on this is do continue on with a smoothie for breakfast. Again, use your favorite functional medicine, daily nutritional support shake or all in one shake, whatever you want to call it. We call ours the daily nutritional support shake. Don't just let it all go back, right? Go back to your style of eating that you feel is best for your body or follow very closely to the meal planning of the Dr. Ball detox. This is literally how I live my life now meaning that I do my smoothie in the morning. So it's not just the shake in the water. It's a full smoothie. I do a vegan-based lunch. I do either a fresh-pressed juice in the afternoon or I do a second smoothie in the afternoon. And then I do dinner at night, which is either another vegan-based dinner or some type of 
some type of, not necessarily paleo because I'm, I'm not afraid to eat rice and I'm not afraid to eat oats in my diet because they work for my body, but I, I choose to have fish at night or not. Like that's basically it. And, and so anyway, you'll decide on that, what works best for you. Try to just follow it. I mean, you'll be super healthy and so there's no downside to that, but at least try to maintain with the daily nutritional support shake smoothie, whether it's for breakfast or mid-afternoon, so that you keep getting all the nutrients that your body needs. Okay. Can I do the detox without using the pills and just do the daily nutritional support all-in-one powder? The answer to this is actually no. And the reason is that the shake powder does not have... Yes, it has the phase one nutrients, all of your B vitamins, your vitamin C, your vitamin E, all of those great things. Absolutely. And it has the minerals. And enough for a daily detox, yes. But it does not contain the extra glutathione and acetylcysteine and the, the Ayurvedic herbs that we use as well to move things through the bowels. So there's a reason we formulated it specifically like this and the reason why those are not for daily use. You don't use the FM detox or the AYU, the IU detox capsules on a daily basis because they are stronger detoxifiers and I don't believe you need to be doing that on a daily basis. I like to do it again on a quarterly basis or for some people sooner, which is totally fine. So yes, you do need to use the capsules to get the most effect. And the whole point is to get the most effect possible. So that's why we do that. Big, big difference. Absolutely. Yes. Can I change the timing of my shake? So yes, do change the timing of your shakes. If you're someone that works an overnight shift or wakes up later, whatever it might be, easy to do. A shake an hour or two after upon waking, and then every three and a half hours after that for four shakes for the day. So another example would be your first shake is at 6 a.m., okay? Because you're maybe someone that wakes up at four for your job and goes to bed at eight. So let's say you have a, a shake at 6 a.m., another at 9.30. I'm trying to do math now. This is going to be hard. Another at 1 p.m. And then another one after that at 4.30 p.m. I believe that's correct. But anyway, if it's not, it's okay. Have a laugh at my expense. Let's do it correctly. 6 a.m., 9.30 a.m. And then it would be three and a half hours would be 1 p.m. And then it would be 4.30 p.m. I think I'm correct on that. All right. So that would be your four shakes per day. So yes, wait an hour or two after waking and then do a shake every three and a half hours for four shakes total for the day for your shake fast days. And then for days three through seven, absolutely. Just set it up as your breakfast, lunch, mid-afternoon snack at dinner. The reason we do that mid-afternoon snack is just to make sure that you're satiated, never hungry, and you're getting in lots and lots of water. Okay. Number 19 is, can I use herbs and spices on the detox, on a functional medicine detox? This is a do. Yes, you absolutely do use things like parsley and cilantro and thyme and oregano and rosemary. Not only of these things help with detoxification, especially things like parsley and cilantro, which are great chelators of heavy metals, but also not they, they boost the metabolism, but they also help to kill gut bugs as well, such as candida and uh, pathogenic overgrowth of bacteria in the gut. So yes, please feel free to use spices with your cooking. You can use pinks like Redmond's real salt or Himalayan sea salt. You can use pepper. You can use spices. Like Those are all okay. No problem at all. Okay, no problem at all. And number 20, last one, will doing a detox lower my thyroid or metabolism? So this is a do the detox even if you have low thyroid or low metabolic issues. And the reason is sometimes those low thyroid, hypothyroid or metabolic issues have to do with toxicity-based issues, with broken down pathways. We've had people that have not been able to lose weight doing keto. They've not been able to lose weight doing low carb. They've not been able to do, lose weight with all of these different things, high protein. And then they did the Dr. Ball detox or a functional medicine detox. I can only speak for the, the one, obviously, that we're doing with people. And then all of a sudden, weight loss became easier. And the reason it became easier is why? Their body became healthier. We tell people all the time, our job is not to help you lose weight. Our job is to help you get super healthy. But as a side effect of us getting you extremely healthy, you lose the weight if you need to. That's the whole thing. So we speed up the metabolism because we're eating those four times a day. We're removing the toxic water weight. We're helping to oxidize fat. We're doing all of those things that, that was going to help you burn the body fat. But then keep in mind, we're only doing the two shake fast days. After that, it's back to eating four times a day, which is going to be better if you're someone that's not eating until lunch. So you're going to keep that metabolism going and you're getting all the nutrients that your body needs. It's a lot of times a weight loss issue is that your body's lacking nutrients and has poor digestion. So what it's doing is it's asking for more calories. It can extract the nutrients, the micronutrients that it gets from the small amount of calories. So it needs to ask you for more. 
and it's desperate for more nutrients. So it starts to hold on to more and more and more, and you start to accumulate more and more body fat. And remember, as I said in the very beginning of this show, is that sometimes the weight that you're holding right now is literally toxic water weight, and it's because of the toxins that your body's swollen with that you need to eliminate and remove. So my recommendation, again, thyroid or metabolic issues, you can still do a detox, 7, 14, or 21 days. The first time you do it, no problem at all. And again, the first time you do it, even if you're doing a 21 day, you could even just do the first part of it as the first two shake fast days and then just follow the meal plan from days three through 21. But again, I give specific recommendations on how to do a functional medicine detox on episode 823. So check out that show. But yes, you're able to do that and you will most likely see tremendous benefit as we've seen and our you know success stories that we've had. If I did not answer your do and don't, your frequently asked question, just go to Stephen Cabral. Dot com. Actually, go to drcabraldetox.com forward slash support. That is a page that I'm looking at actually right now that shows at least another 10 or 20 more frequently asked questions. So you can go to drcabraldetox.com forward slash support. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually link up all the supportive links at stephencabral.com forward slash 837, which is today's episode. So On that show notes page, I'm going to link up episode 823, the right way to do a functional medicine detox. I will link up the support page with in-depth answers to all of the most frequently asked questions. And I will also link up the cabralsupportgroup.com, which is a support group that you can just ask questions anytime that you might be on a detox or just need the support of others as well. So hopefully today's episode was helpful. Again, today's topic literally came from you, our community. You're just asking, hey, can I do this? Can I do that? So really appreciate the the feedback, really appreciate all the support really that you've given myself and my team over the past couple of years. This has been a tremendous journey so far, and I just really can't wait to see how far we can take it. Thank you, everyone. Take care, and I can't wait to chat with you again tomorrow. Thanks for just joining me today on the Cabral Concept. It was so good to have you. And I want to let you know about a podcast listener only pop-up special offer for the next 100 people. I'm going to be giving away a free signed copy of my new book, The Rain Barrel Effect, for all qualifying orders at stephencabral.com forward slash store. It's that simple. Pick up your favorite nutritional supplement or run that functional medicine lab test you've been thinking about, and you'll get a complimentary signed copy of my new book. This is a limited edition signed copy run of only 100 copies, and so once they're sold out, the pop-up offer is over. I love doing these fun little special offers like this for our community, and I hope that you get your autographed copy of The Rain Barrel Effect today while supplies last. Simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash store, and if the offer bar at the top of the website says we have copies left, then you'll be able to get your own limited edition Rain Barrel Effect book on all orders over $99. Limit one per customer while supplies last, and yes, this same offer is available in Canada, the UK, and Australia. Thank you, everyone. I truly appreciate each and every one of your listens, and go check out stephencabral.com forward slash store for availability.